shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, he said, for mighty dread had seized the troubled minds. The tidings of great joy I bring to you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David's line. The Savior who is Christ the Lord and this shall be the sign. The heavenly babe you there shall find to human view displayed and mainly wrapped in swaddling bands and in a Good morning, welcome and Merry Christmas to you all and a special welcome to our visitors today. Uh, it's so good to see you with us and welcome also to our online congregation. Thank you for joining us today for worship on this special day, Christmas Day. So we meet together to worship God for the wonderful gift that he has given we acknowledge the First Nations peoples on whose lands we are meeting, recognising that these lands have been created by the Triune God. And we give thanks to these ancient peoples for their stewardship of this, and we pray for their elders, past, present and emerging. Our call to worship. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory. Let us worship God. Our 
How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. We light the Christ candle, the candle of our Saviour, Jesus, light of the world. Today we live in hope. We pray for peace. We share your love as we are filled with your joy. Now time to stand and sing, hark the herald angels sing. Please be seated. Let us pray. This is our prayer for our journey. Uh, It's called Like Shepherds, Like Angels, and it was written by Craig Mitchell. Loving God, some of us are like Zechariah, not believing that you would choose to bless us. Some of us are like Mary, surprised and humbled by the gift of new life. Some of us are like Joseph, needing reassurance and faith for the way ahead. Some of us are like Elizabeth, 
supporting others as they begin the journey. And some of us are like the shepherds, unsure whether your presence is real or a dream, and some are like the angels, eagle, eager to tell others the good news. Wherever we are in our journey of faith, Remind us that your plan lies before us and help us to grow tall in your love and light so that we may stand strong and gentle for you in our world. Amen. Today is Christmas Day the coming of the one who brings the possibility of peace in the world. As we light this candle, let us pray deeply for that peace both in our lives and in the life of the world. Amen. Peace be with you. And so as we come to our time of scripture reading, let us pray for illumination. O Lord, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow on the path you set before us. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. And our first reading comes from Hebrews, beginning at chapter 1, verse 1. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants flames of fire. But of the sun, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever, and the righteous scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you remain. They will all wear out like clothing, like a cloak. You roll, will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. For the stories from the founding of your church, thanks be to God. And our gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, also beginning at verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. Time to sing again the vocal challenge, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight over oh, all the earth. Ye who sang creation story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, worship Christ the May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, naturally, I've been thinking a lot about Christmas. 
I have to admit that it does seem very different this year than it has in other years. We sort of came out of lockdown and there Christmas was just hanging in the background as we were busy adjusting to our new COVID lifestyle the media keeps reporting on. COVID itself seems to have taken some of the gloss off Christmas. We always hear people moaning, oh, I hate Christmas or I can't wait for Christmas to be over or even Christmas is just a money-making exercise. But this year, a number of people I've spoken with are saying, I just can't be bothered with it this year. Because of the year or so that we have had, all the meaning seems to have been sucked out of what should be one of the two holiest days of the year. With that having been said, the faithful, the believers of the world, have gathered here at Narry North and places like ours to celebrate this wonderful day of Christ's birthday. As we gather here, I think, because of the hope that birth brings to us. One of the Bible passages that is heavily associated with Advent in Christmas is the passage from Isaiah that speaks of the people uh, of the world walking in darkness. And often we associate this darkness with the bad things of the world the evil that takes place, the greed and the selfishness, the violence and the hatred. These things cast a deep shadow across the earth. And this is so especially in John's Gospel. When John uses the word the world, he generally is meaning this evil, darkened place. It's a place largely different from what God intended when he created it. In Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, we are told of the paradise that God made for us, but sin entered the world, and so here we are. Gathered together in our small church and with our online community, holding on to this hope given to us by the birth of the baby that Mary is holding. I wonder if God could have done it better, though. If Jesus had come down from heaven in a golden chariot with a horde of winged angels and trumpeters announcing his arrival, and if he had gone to the palaces of kings and queens and the mansions of the rich and given his message, would that have been more effective? Would the world now be a place of love and light and everything sweet and dandy? I somehow don't think so. I think we would end up with the same world we have. I think the way that God put his plan into action was the way it had to be. One thing the Bible tells us is that God loves to talk. God spoke and the earth, the stars and the planets, the seas and the land, the birds and the animals and the fish all came into being. God spoke again and people were created and he spoke to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, to Moses and to all the prophets down through the ages as a way of speaking to his people in general. And then he spoke again, and he himself came down to earth, born in the form of a human baby. It had to be this way so that because if he wanted to fully identify with what us humans go through, he had to live it. The only way he could live it was to be born as a baby. And hence we come across one of the great mysteries of the Christian faith, that at one and the same time Jesus was both fully human and fully divine. If Jesus had come down in a golden chariot, how could he experience the trials of growing up, learning to walk and to talk, learning how to make friends with other children, learning to play, learning what is dangerous and what is safe, suffering temptations, perhaps a broken heart, and many other things we learn as we grow, learning everything about what it means to be human. But both the writer of Hebrews and John in his gospel are quick to remind us that this is indeed no ordinary child. It is no coincidence that both the writers are at pains to let the reader know that this child has been around since before the earth was created. It is no coincidence that both use the phrase, in the beginning. 
and take us right back to the very words of Genesis. Jesus, who this baby is, of course, had been there from the time of the creation, was part of the creation, was with God and was God. And without him, nothing would have life. He is also going to be there when the earth wears out like old clothing, whenever that may be. So before time began and after time ends, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, will be there. And this is where our hope lies. We put our faith and our trust in Jesus and he will see us through to life eternal with him. John the Baptist came testifying to the light, this light that shines through the darkness and brings life with it. In a way, we who call ourselves Christians are kind of like candles burning away in the darkness, trying to spread that little bit of light that we have been given. It reminds me of an old Sunday school song we used to sing when I was growing up. So I apologise already. Uh, Jesus bids us shine with a pure, clear light, like a little candle burning in the night. In this hour of darkness, so we must shine. You in your small corner, and I in mine. So some people knew it. It is a glorious thing to seek to shine our light into the world because the Word of God first showed us how to do it. The Word, so important. In the Old Testament, when Greek was spoken in the synagogue, the Word came to stand in for the name of God, or God himself, as God's name was unable to have been mentioned. And it had the inclination towards taking action rather than it was some idea of who God was. The difference in John's Gospel is that the word became flesh. The Greek word used for flesh is sarx, S-A-R-X. It means more than just becoming a body. It means participating in everything human, breathing, loving, thinking, feeling, open to everything that a human is open to. It is such a rich word. It's not just becoming a person. It's involved in everything. And God loves us so much, he became Sarx for us. He became Emmanuel, God with us. God dwelt among us and continues to dwell among us if we wish to see it. If we want to see God, we only have to look to Jesus. If we want to restore the magic of Christmas, we only have to look to Jesus. If we want to get out of the doldrums that we are feeling, we only have to look to Jesus. If we want Christmas not to be a money-making exercise, we only have to look to Jesus. God has given us his word, and all we need to do is shine this word into the darkness. It is not easy, but that is where our hope lies. Amen. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this wonderful day of love and hope that is Christmas. We give you thanks for your grace that sent your son Jesus to us and for the gift of his life that enables us to receive eternal life. May our lives bring your glory now and forevermore. Amen. So together let us say the affirmation of faith. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power and love, whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love 
as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord, to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Thank you, Jim. So in response to God's word, let us worship God with our offering. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we give you thanks that we, in turn, can return these gifts to you. We pray that you bless them and use them for the building up of your kingdom in this place. Through that same Jesus Christ, our Lord. We come now to our prayers of the community. Let us rejoice for our God has done marvellous things and let us give thanks for our God has come to dwell with us. God of heaven, we give you thanks and praise for glad tidings of a Saviour's birth. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ as we celebrate again your coming to us. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith, for those who have never heard your name. May we, like the shepherds, hurry to greet you and make known to others what has come to pass. God of heaven dwelling among us in your mercy. We give you thanks and praise for glad tidings of peace to a warring world. We pray for our sisters and brothers with whom we share this earth. We pray for those who experience no peace, no justice, no dignity or hope. For all victims of prejudice, hatred, violence and greed. May we, like the angelic host, spread abroad your message of peace and goodwill. God of heaven dwelling among us in your mercy. We give you thanks and praise for glad tidings of love to your lost and lonely ones. And we pray for those whom Christmas is a time of sadness or distress. We pray for the unwanted and the unloved, for the hungry and the homeless, and those afraid for the future. May we, like Mary, be bearers of your love to the world. God of heaven dwelling among us in your mercy. We give you thanks and praise for glad tidings and healing to your, to your wounded people. And we pray for all broken in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all who mourn the absence of loved ones, for the sick and the dying and all who minister to them. And today, Lord, we pray for those in particular we bring before you, known to us in need of prayer. We pray for Clifford, for Elizabeth, for Jacqueline, for Sandra and her niece Desiree, for St Annie, for Ivy Gus and Ian, for Donna, for Heather, for Shirley and for Len, for Chrissy, Brodie and Kelsey, Barbara, Paul and Lorraine and for June, for Bob, for Jan and Wall, for Pearlie and Dennis, for Pam and Ian, for Kathy, for Helen, for Brenda, for Bruce and Mary's friend Jeanette, for Ross and Beck, Daniela and Mason and for Jason and for all those in need of prayer but have not made their request known, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be known on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. a few notices uh, as voted by the congregation there'll be no Sunday service tomorrow the uh, Christmas service today's service will be repeated online Uh, so our next Sunday service is Sunday the 2nd of January uh, which will be a Eucharist service so if you're at home for that service make sure you have your bread and wine with you so that we can take it at the appropriate time Uh, Mary and I will be on holidays from the 3rd of January for a week, so the service on the 9th of January uh, is being led by the worship group, and I thank them for that, and I'm interested to see what they come up with. And just a reminder of Sammy Stamp, if you have stamps on letters, uh, make sure you cut them off and bring them in, and we send them off to Synod, and that goes towards the Synod mission. And also, uh, just a reminder of uh, our collection for Frontier Services uh, supporting bush chaplains. If you have any loose change, there's a bowl just by the door as you go out, uh, and that goes to supporting our bush chaplains. Thank you, Jim. The words of mission. Our gracious and holy God, give us diligence to seek you, wisdom to perceive you, and patience to wait for you. Grant us, O God, a mind to meditate on you, eyes to behold you, ears to listen to your word, a heart to love you, and a life to proclaim you through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning and I thank our online online congregation. I wish you all a happy and blessed Christmas day and a wonderful week ahead. So we please stand for the blessing. Jesus, the light of the world is born. Jesus, the word made flesh is born. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us is born this day. Let us go from here as people who carry the light and the promise of God into the world that God loves and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit bathe you with his glorious light now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace who love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And our recessional hymn is Good Christians All Rejoice. Welcome to Smartsheet. The new world of hybrid work is open for business. Your best and brightest need to be aligned in their systems, empowered to build no-code solutions with the agility to take what works and roll it across your whole business. And you need it all with industry-leading security and controls that IT demands. Smartsheet is enterprise-ready, IT indoors, and built to unlock the true power of your business, your people. No code, no limits. That's solutions at scale. Visit Smartsheet.com to start your free trial today.